Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Cockatrix from Massive Darkness. Uh, this guy is pretty much a chocobo. Uh, <laughs> there's no real good at getting around it, I guess with this alligator tail here. And actually, you're going to see here, this I was not happy with. The mold line goes right along the side of it and is quite thick. I mean, you can really see it there. Um, probably the worst mold line I've come across so far in Massive Darkness. You can see kind of them folds down into the side at the very end and it's I don't know you're gonna you're gonna be working on it a bit to really get that looking flat I get it pretty okay to the point where I think painted it'll look all right luckily this tail is kind of scaly anyway so it kind of looks like it's part of that you can make it work I think um yeah just just rather unfortunate a little bit on the beak a little bit here and there but otherwise not not a terrible one ex again except for that tail um, and the details on that tail aren't that big anyway. Uh, okay, so there is one other problem. So right here on these these feathers, there's actually, um, you know, they get like that kind of tapered edge, kind of like a, a knife point, but, you know, with soft plastic uh, that I'm trying to trim off to keep the shape good there. But that, that took a little bit. But otherwise, base was pretty fine. The rest of it was pretty okay. Uh, a little bit there on the... Uh, the legs there as well but that's your standard stuff this this is fine and easy to do and not a big deal at all no weird angles here even it's it's just kind of right down the middle um side versus the middle in here it, you know it it's whatever uh there's as you can see a little bit of glue here that was just on mine yours might be a little different because that tail is kind of glued into place before we as consumers get it uh, which you know has its pros and cons, but there was a little bit of uh, glue there. So I'm going to start with some Rackharth flesh. I'm actually going to use a lot of flesh colors on him, which is kind of odd because, first of all, he's a he's a bird, and uh, not a lot of flesh, a lot of feathers. Um, but I actually like the colors, and when you see the, um, the concept art, uh, it, he's fairly muted except for kind of his, his wings and head, uh, and so I'm trying to keep with that. If... You'll see later on if his wings weren't green, I would have put his tail as green. Uh, you know, kind of more that crocodile thing. Um, it would have been some kind of like throwback to impossible, impossible monsters if you ever played that on PC, uh, back in the day. But, uh, no, I, I'm going to keep it the same color as the rest of his body, uh, as if that's kind of his skin under there. So, uh, I painted his legs there. I'm going to paint his, his tail. Eventually I'll move up to, uh, his arms. And uh, again, this is a real quick paint. This is kind of a solid little piece. It's kind of twirly, but it's not wound like a snake would be or something like that. So the angles are pretty easy. Just trying to get plenty of paint in there. This is just a base coat. Uh, I'm going to actually do some highlighting and shading on that to try and draw out those little ridges because they're not as obvious. In fact, this is one of the few times where painted, it's less obvious than in the gray. At least I, I found. It could have just been because it's such a light color there. I, I, I don't know, but... Um, the, those ridges, those ridges, especially towards the end, aren't actually that noticeable. But yeah, just a, a quick cover there. Not too bad. Moving on to some basic skin tone. Again, I'm, I'm doing a lot of skin here, uh, color wise, which is kind of ironic, but it's, uh, kind of that kind of tan, slightly peachy color I want on his main body feathers. Uh, I, I paint his feathers quite a few different colors. He's kind of like the, the clown chocobo here, I, I suppose, uh, but with a terrible color choice if he's trying to be a clown. I, uh, I don't know. It, it's whatever. You know, I didn't want him, I didn't want him to be all the same. And actually, the concept art has quite a few different shades of this kind of color. So that's why, again, if you're going with this, this kind of skin color here, you just kind of need the different shades of it. So that's, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Uh, also, I did have them on hand. Uh, so, as you see here, I went to a smaller brush, just trying to, I, I got kind of the majority of it there, and then to, before I got to the neck, I really wanted to make sure I didn't spill over, so, I, and I'm not loading the brush very much, too, as you can see, I only get, like, just a tiny bit before I need to get some more paint on my brush, so I'm constantly getting a little bit more paint in and just kind of pushing it in there, uh, getting those little stray feathers. Uh, I love that detail, by the way, that it, it's not exactly flat. There are a few kind of feathers going, and you, you see that kind of on his uh, head later on, too, which is nice. Um, so, originally when I picked this model, I, I wanted it because he's, you know, unique and cool, and I don't know, I wanted him painted. 
Uh, but I was worried about those wings. The only bad part about those wings, and ironically enough, I don't really show it on camera, is he actually has kind of a, an, an elbow under there. You see it right there, uh, where his wings are. In fact, at first I thought that may just be part of his wings, so I actually have to repaint it over. Um, but it's that getting that is difficult. Every other part is actually pretty easy. This was not a difficult model to paint. Uh, which was kind of nice. I mean, he's got all the texture you need. Uh, otherwise, this is kind of almost a paint by numbers, right? It's just filling in all the little bits that I see that are that feather that or that texture. Um, his arms are going to be a little bit different, so I'm avoiding those right now. See, even tipping it over and putting it in there, even the camera can get a, an angle shot in there. It's actually not too bad, uh, which I was very happy with. I was worried I'd get paint on both sides and really struggle with that and have to touch it up a few times. Here's some dark flesh, again with the flesh, though this is actually uh, fairly yellow. Uh, I, so I, I went and picked this paint up at the local hobby store uh, because I picked it for the color. I went and looked at it online and then looked at it in the store and noted that like every paint it changes color depending on the lighting, but that's alright. I'm happy with how it turned out here. Uh, it's just kind of a more stark yellow. Uh, it will get a wash and it'll kind of Help it blend a bit more, uh, but I didn't want it to blend completely, or I would have just picked the same um, basic skin tone. Uh, so this is a bit more yellow, uh, but still in that skin range. So this is the third flesh color I've used on this model, um, and uh, I don't know. Like, what what would you count? I guess I guess birds have have flesh. I don't know. I, I wouldn't consider them flesh colors. Normally, people paint them like orange, right? Uh, it, and and I will I notice I left the kind of scaly feet uh, separate because those will get kind of that treatment. But I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking of chicken. So here I'm painting just kind of these accent. You see the little uh, feathers that are smaller as yellow. And then I'll paint the other big ones green, just like on his, uh, his two wings there. And then leading up, just three little guys right in front uh, as kind of like the kind of mini feathers that then go into the big full green feathers. Uh, very nice touch. I'm actually really glad I did that. I can't remember if that was on the concept art or not, but I'm happy with it either way. So again, same on this side. Uh, it's not too long, so I decided to go ahead and show it, and then you get to see the kind of entire process here. Uh, so it, if you notice on the first one, I did kind of bring the, the color up a bit more. I'm going to stop doing that here, and in fact, I'm going to paint an extra green coat off camera to undo what I did on the other side. So I'm going to stop here right at those kind of more small uh, defined feathers and not bring it into the green. I was going to do kind of a like a, a poor lazy man's wet blend, but I decided against that. Okay, Death Guard Green, another new color I had to go get. This is a great green though. It's very... It's not great. It's, it's very muted. Uh, a lot of greens I, I find are either really dark or really bright. And this is just kind of... It, it's just green, right? So I'm using my regiment brush here, but no thought, notice I'm not going to the end. Uh, I'm going to come over later with a, a much smaller brush to make sure I don't blend it in. But I wanted to quickly get those tops. I didn't want to have to load my, my, uh, my brush so often. So I'm going to real quick get those big parts and then fill in the, the smaller parts. Um, and that's perfectly fine to do. Uh, feel free to do that. It, it'll look like they're different colors, right? Because the one you painted with the big brush, notice those I did full, uh, regimen. I got a little dirt in there. See how the color looks a little different? This is because it's one's wet, one's dry. They're going to end up the same. Uh, so that's, that's not a big deal there. Uh, so don't fret if you see that. It, it will be the same color. It's not like I'm doing, you know, any shading or highlighting or anything in between. So, uh, it, it actually kind of helps because then you can really see where you, you started and stopped. Uh, especially because a lot of people will prime these minis like all green or, you know, whatever. And so sometimes it can be hard to tell what you did and did not paint. But in that, it's pretty easy. Again, getting inside there, I was, I was worried. See, I just painted the, uh, the elbow of him green thinking that may be another feather. It is not. That is an elbow. So don't do that. Uh, not a big deal. Is this another? Another, oh, I just no, see, just trying to figure out, <laughs> making sure I got every little bit. You, you'll see, I, I turn the model quite often on this. Um, normally on a model, it, it, it kind of has more of, I guess, 
two sides, so you paint like the left side and then the right side. Um, but for whatever reason, I, I kept twirling back and forth, and I do the inside of one wing and then go to the other, uh, just because there are quite a lot of details. But luckily, they're all defined details. As you can see, there's not any. Yeah, you know, I was complaining about the tail earlier not being super defined. As you can see, it's kind of barely uh, any uh, separation there between the scales. But the feathers are are on point. The the model does a really good job there, which I am pretty happy with. On to Squig Orange. Uh, this is going to be the base coat uh, for his head. Now he's going to have a more red uh, beginning to his feathers and to that. Uh, I do not know the word, so I'm not going to do it, but his neck beard of skin, I'm going to describe it as that. Uh, so I, I kind of splashed some orange on there, but I'm not going to paint the whole thing. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, so the, the feathers go right into his skull, and that, it can be hard to see. Uh, really just kind of, you, your brush will kind of naturally lend to it, because there is a bit of a um, a, a curve there. And so the brush kind of naturally kind of stops where it does meet the skull. So you can kind of see it in this lighting close up really well. Um, I, again, I'm not painting that close because then I'd be like inside the camera and I am not inside the camera. So uh, I couldn't quite see it, but I was able to find it pretty easily just by the kind of the feel of painting. One of the nice things about such a, uh, a physical hobby is you kind of get that tactile feedback, which can sometimes help uh, getting in those little brushes and inside of his like kind of ear feather tufts. Um, Harder than the wings, actually, but not difficult at all. Don't, don't worry about it. Just kind of whip your, your brush in there and you, you'll be all right. So kind of doing the last touch-ups there and then moving on to the Screaming Skull. As you can guess, this is for his beak. Not the end of it, though. That's going to be a different color. So this is just kind of his actual head, I guess, and not his beak. Uh, so kind of going around around the eyes again with a, a small brush. Uh, it's not a insane detail or anything like that. And in fact, I, I did not use insane detail for anything. Uh, don't quote me on that. I might have used it for the eyes, but I believe I still used my character brush, which is what this is. Uh, so yeah, all big kind of features. He he was actually really nice to paint. Uh, he he was he was nice. I, I enjoyed painting him. Uh, the model was nice. It was easy to paint. All the features were were readily visible and and, and easy to find. And uh, you know, it's just just not bad. It was really kind of painting by numbers, as you can see. So uh, I'm going to bring that same kind of color down. Again, I didn't want to have like a bright orange or, you know, that kind of like almost comic booky y uh, orange uh, legs. So I brought this same color down to the bottoms of his legs. But again, really easy, very uh, defined bottom and top. Notice that he does have those little bits that kind of pad the bottom of his talons. So you're going to kind of go... Uh, right into that that lump there a little bit farther than you should and there is a third toe in this one I'm painting there you can kind of see it there I don't know. wait do, do birds have toes I don't know I feel like he has toes uh, so there's a third one in there you just kind of dip your brush in there you can't really see it so just uh, this is one of those times where I feel like you kind of have to um, not be a perfectionist just, so just shove your brush in there and, and, and call it good nobody's gonna see in there you just need to make sure it's colored um, and then I'm going to bring it, uh, down into here. So this is actually his, um, rat cloths or rat carth flesh. That first one I did on his legs and his tail. I have now noticed that his arms are in fact arms and not feathers. And so I'm going to paint those in, um, and, and, but I'm not going to bring it down all the way, uh, cause I'm going to use that same screaming skull on his fingers as well. I guess this bird has toes and fingers. Um, again, inside where his, his, uh, claws are kind of hooked. It's just kind of a mess in there. So just, again, jab your brush in there. Call it good. Um, there is no real rhyme or reason to that. All right, I'm going to move on to Bane Blade Brown. And here I'm going to paint his talons. I'm keeping with, because I thought about maybe doing a gray. Uh, that's what I'm going to do his his actual beak in. Uh, but I wanted to kind of keep this kind of earth tone uh, deal I'm going with, which I actually kind of like, and I think it, it fits pretty well. And if you look at the concept art, it's not like it's it's way out there or anything. I, I think it matches fairly well. It's, it, the towns are kind of hard to look, but they lo they don't look the same color as the beak in the concept art. And so I I went with the brown. I thought it looked pretty nice. <laughs> so again, figuring out <laughs> where those where those fingers are uh, right there can be kind of of difficult, uh, especially the curled in one. I have no idea if I painted them right. 
but I painted them and they look good where I painted them. So uh, here's again that Screaming Skull on those fingers, finishing up those hands. Uh, this will be the end of the hands until I apply some shade. So almost done with that. Just kind of getting in there again, trying to figure out what, you know, where it's a finger, what's not. It It's harder than it looks, trust me. I, I was tempted to actually, pa not pause, but slow down the video here and just kind of show you guys what it is I'm working with. Uh, I, I love the sculpt and, and the detail. It's just these three fingers curled in, that curled in one especially, just kind of, it, it's really hard to tell. <laughs> but it looks it looks great painted, so don't worry about that. Mechanica Standard Gray. Um, Citadel always spells gray with an E. And for some reason, I always spelled it with an A. I don't know. I, I believe both are accepted. One's probably more correct. Maybe one's a British thing or... Uh, a UK, uh, a Europe thing. I don't know. A non-American English. Emperor's Children. There we go. These are just two little kind of fleshy uh, openings there. Avalon Sunset. This is going to be for the tongue. So lots of little one-off colors here for uh, his his mouth. Uh, but I like that. Here's the Evil Sun Scarlet. Remember, it's going to go into that red. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my Insane Detail brush on that. So I did lie. And then I'm moving on to the character brush to paint in that uh, skin neck beard thing that he's got going on. Uh, be sure to actually poke your brush into that hole so you get the sides. And then bring out just a little bit so I'm starting at the edge and just swiping down. It's actually pretty easy to do and they're they're actually not that far off in color so that looks nice together. So again just kind of going all around and bringing the red to the kind of more muted orange and I'm actually going to bring that gray into his mouth. I actually grabbed my Abaddon Black to do this, and I decided the black may be a little too... Uh, his mouth is really open. I don't feel like it'd be black, right? And so I'm going to actually just bring that gray inside, as if you're kind of seeing the inside of the beaker. I don't know, whatever. And then touching up that tongue, because I messed it up. And shading. Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to put this... This is just Citadel's regular old brown shade. Um, so if you're using something else, use whatever brown shade they have. I'm just going to put this on his, uh, really anything that is in this screaming color. So his head and his feet and his hands, just bringing out the the kind of uh, scaly bony texture there. I'm also going to then bring it into that basic skin toned uh, main body feathers. Uh, I, again, this is I'm, I'm painting it with a very small brush. I'm not really globbing it on or anything. This is my character brush and I'm just trying to get it in there. It'll darken a little bit. I'm fine with that. Uh, I, I'm at, I did paint him pretty light. I'm okay with him being a little darker, but this really defines, as you can see, those those feathers, uh, especially from, uh, like, you know, tabletop distance. So you can really actually see that it is, in fact, textured and not just kind of a, a fuzzy blob that these kind of small textures can sometimes do. They're nice, but from that distance, you, you don't always see it. No oil. This is just their dark shade. So I, I guess a black shade. I don't know. Again, painting it very lightly and just kind of putting it on just the, uh, this was the dark flesh color that I went out and bought. That's, uh, fairly yellow. Uh, just kind of getting it in there. I didn't want to turn it brown. I wanted to kind of keep it that white. And again, very lightly, just bringing out the texture and nothing else, putting it on the tongue too. And then I'm going to end up putting it on that, uh, skin tone on all of his well, little skin or whatever. So I want to bring it onto his uh, tail here. Now, there is something that I've always struggled with with known oil. Um, so you see here, I put it on, and maybe it's just my bad luck with known oil. I put it on his tail and I'm, you know, making sure it goes where I want to go. All right. So I have my small brush and I'm putting it on the bottom and the top and the side and all that, trying to get it in the ridges. And then I'm going to end up leaving it alone. Okay. Now to the Athonia camo shade. This is a green shade for his feathers. I left that tail alone and it ended up still sliding a bit and pooling. Uh, I didn't babysit it with the brush like I, I maybe should have. Um, and so I had to go in and, and kind of fix that. So you can maybe even see right there, there's a, a few streaks where it kind of settled. Um, not a big deal. It's easy to fix as long as you catch it before you go too far. Uh, this is again, this is a little bit more liberal because I wanted to pool in the uh, middle of the feathers uh, there to kind of darken that. Uh, so a little bit heavier, but it's still not um, 
with a thick brush um, and kind of getting inside there again I'm just globbing it in there it's not not terrible just you know put it in there it's pretty easy to know when to stop Cassandoria yellow probably murdered that um, again very lightly here I didn't want to drastically change the color I more or less just wanted to fully blend those colors together so at the end of this the red to orange there is no real hard line at all uh which which i'm pretty happy with in fact it might be a little too well blended um at least for my eyes uh but i can see here looking at it right now while I, while I talk to you uh so at least in this lighting you can see it okay this white is just to show that i am mixing it in now notice <laughs> don't laugh too much i'll laugh for you guys uh this is uh, i'm pretty new to highlighting and this is a heavy highlight i had to fix this off camera and shame uh locked in a closet where nobody could see me uh fix my mistakes uh, no but but i didn't i didn't record it because you'll see the correct version later on uh it, just i'm actually okay with the color it just needed to be more watered down and not put on so heavy so i do want the tips to be a little bit heavier so i tried to end my brush stroke there if i can or at least somehow make it pool kind of towards the end uh, so you can see right there i added a bit more to the end there and i just kind of want to uh, highlight the edges a little bit and the tips a little bit while keeping the kind of middle that normal green uh, with a very light shade and then uh actually do the the uh middle with that pooled in part uh, so you know so normally when you put a shade you're supposed to highlight back onto uh just using the normal color um but with how little i did there was there was barely any difference so this is me trying to skip this step notice i speed it up real quick there that is not a speed up when it comes to the uh the video okay so this is again white mixed with that same flesh color i used before and this is just me putting it um on right before the ridge drops to the next one so it's right before that and putting it on the little kind of spiky scale thing i have no idea what that is and on the top and kind of where the light would hit and then again just trying to define um those separations there i'm going to actually play around with this a bit more uh, you, you'll see that to kind of again help help define that it's probably the one part this model's lacking a little bit tiny bit of uh whitened uh uh eyes there and we are onto the base again add plenty of glue tons and tons of glue don't go a lot in the glue add your glue and then add more glue uh <laughs> because if you don't add enough it's gonna fall off um while you paint it now once it's painted uh paint actually helps hold it down a little bit too uh but you gotta actually paint the stuff first so again i'm gonna wipe down press down as good as i can i can't quite reach my finger in here as well as i'd like but it works Okay, again, the mechanic is standard gray and Nagaroth Knight. And the storm host silver. Again, that's about a equal part of the gray and purple, and then a tiny bit of silver. So I've actually flip-flopped on this a little bit. I've I've done Cantor Blue and I've done Nagaroth Knight. Uh I haven't decided which one looks better. Uh I might just kind of mix and match it so they're not quite the same. I haven't decided yet. Uh they're never the same anyway, because each time I mix it, it's different. Uh, don't ever do a custom mix on all of your bases. Okay, adding some Ministratum Gray. This is for a dry brush to bring out the texture. Kind of bringing it, uh, uh, bringing that texture. A again, you can see the texture up close, but again, this is going to be on a game board somewhere, and you got to be able to see it from a distance, and that kind of adds that. Gehenna's Gold for the trim. Again, all roaming monsters in Massive Darkness are going to have a kind of a gold trim here. I don't notice the bottom. Uh, because the bottom of the brush isn't, isn't holding as much uh, of the paint as the top. So it doesn't quite get as uh, thickly painted. I have to go over this a second time off camera. I've I've thought about holding the brush the other way, um, but haven't done that yet. Oh, and that is me dropping it. Uh, just thought to show you guys that. Yeah, I dropped minis. It happens. Uh, luckily, this did not break. Uh, <laughs> a little smaller one might have. Okay, this is the... A dull coat or the uh, gloss coat so I sprayed it in a dull coat and now I'm going to cover this in the gloss coat to bring back the shine of the gold make it look a little bit better and here's the finished model I really enjoyed painting him he was super easy he was pretty much paint by numbers there weren't any weird 
angle, you know, uh, angles to kind of get your brush into. There weren't any uh, weird techniques I had to employ. It was just kind of putting paint on the model and liking what I was seeing. I can't wait to run across him in game. I think he looks different than most other roaming monsters because you know, he's a giant colorful bird in a dungeon, which is pretty cool in my book. If you do choose to paint him, I hope you enjoy doing so as well. Let me know how it came out. Again, as I said, I do plan on painting some Blood Rage miniatures soon, as well as Massive Darkness. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about that, if that sounds like a good idea, and what you might want to see first. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll talk to you again next time.